Right now on VFN TV, a prophet, Brett Holderbaum, had a vision, a dream, where he saw a Cuban and Russian aircraft coming in and coming on American territory and weaving in and out of buildings in Miami. Johnny Foote, prophet, sees Russia coming in inside of Florida. Demetrius Judeman, uh, prophet, sees Russia coming in from, and Mexico and Nicaraguans and, uh, and, and others coming in from, from uh, our southern borders. God shows me prophetic. It's gonna be a physical battle in America grounds. We're gonna talk about that right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. So Brett Holderbaum, he is a prophet and he heard, he saw specifically the night vision, he saw uh, imagine you're in Miami. Miami's beautiful. It's got these tall buildings and that. Then imagine all of a sudden you look up and you see flying in between the buildings aircraft. But the aircraft is not American aircraft. That is Cuban and Russian aircraft in American territory. Also, a prophet by the name of Johnny Foote. He sees, God showed him, Russian soldiers on the ground coming up Florida's coast. I know. I'm Greg Lancaster. Joining me is John Ramos. We're talking about a physical battle on America's soul. The Lord has shown us there's gonna be a physical battle. As we talked about in a previous program, Rick Jorner had an encounter with God and he saw himself, the future timeline, the history that's already written in God's books, the history books about America, that there's gonna be a physical battle in America, a physical battle, and it's gonna be uh, um, a, a, another revolutionary type war, another civil type war, because it, we haven't yet gotten to the place that God wants us to be as a nation. That's so important to understand. And we talked about all those details about that you know, in a previous program. But I wanna say this before we read to you what Rick just wrote recently in his journal, that I remember when God showed me about a physical battle taking place in America. We're located on the Gulf Coast. We're in the city of Pensacola. I was having this night vision and I'm talk, met, meeting with a lot of ministers and we're in unity and it's a great thing. You know, the spirit of the Lord is there and all of a sudden I heard a loud explosion. And so I, I stepped outside from the, this loud explosion to see what it, what it was and I looked to, the, to, the, to my right, at that time it was to the south, and what I saw was the, uh, the cradle of US Navy aviation, the, the, um, the naval base and uh, the naval air station in Pensacola, Florida had been bombed. And then I saw aircraft dropping bombs all over our uh, Naval Air Station in Pensacola. Anybody that's in aircraft in the Navy pretty much were trained in that particular area. And so when I go to, to uh, there to be able to, I'm driving that way in a hurry to find out if I can help somebody, the Lord tells me, shows me, I gotta warn the church. So I turn around and I begin to warn the church. And that's what we're doing in these two programs. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. But I wanna tell you what happened because it was so, I mean, we were on the air, uh, you know, Americans don't like to hear bad news, especially Christian Americans. You know, we want to hear about all positive things and that type of thing. You know, and so it's a it's a big deal. You know, when you're sharing things like that, and we want to make sure we heard clearly. So, here it goes. This is the day I told everybody. You know, we're going to do it. I'm going to say it. You know, stuff. We're coming on the air. We're going to do it. You know, we came on the air in the studios, and we're getting ready to, to talk about it. And I started talking about it, and we have this program. We'll make it available to you, so you guys you can hear it and see it for yourself. But so I'm talking and I said, so, and I talked a long time because I didn't want to say it's a physical battle. So finally I said it, there's gonna be a physical battle in America's soil. And then I said, it's gonna be a physical battle. And the third time I said, it's gonna be a physical battle. And bam, the whole county was hit. The power went out all over throughout the county, Pensacola, all the way, all over the place. Simultaneously, at the very same time, the fiber optics were hit in a totally different location and the internet was down in the Gulf Coast. A sign, there's gonna be a physical attack. And you can hear us on the, on the air because we had battery backup and generators, but the, but the lights were not on uh, because Pat Hamilton probably didn't hit them up, right? Anyways, no, I was joking. <laughs> and so here we were in the dark and so you hear us on the radio going like, I guess that was it, because <laughs> that's it. And we're talking and and so you hear that actually happening as we deliver that word. And what, what you hear us talking about is the fact that, that, that as soon as that word went forth about a physical battle, that the power, a power grid was hit throughout the county. I mean, just out all over the place. 
And then uh, the, the fiber optics was hit. Two different encounters that caused this to happen at the very same time where the Gulf Coast was out, the internet. You'd be surprised how quickly you can cut all that stuff off. And so it was all down. What was that all? As God just saying, listen, I'm warning you. He says that if, if I don't warn you, then your blood's on my hands. But if I warn you and you turn, it's a wonderful thing. You make, get yourself right with God, get ready for God. But if you don't turn and I warn you, then that's between you and God. And I think it's Ezekiel 17. And so this, is, this whole thing is a warning. I mean, God is saying, and so I, in this, I want to encourage you, this is not just about you know, getting some beans and some guns and run to the woods. This is about getting right with God. Because a great harvest is coming, a great revival, a great awakening is coming. Abortion is ending. It's all happening, just like God said. But what's going to cause people's hearts to turn is difficulty. It's going to be, it's going to be where you, you, know, you, you don't think you have it made and that your 401k might not be coming through and that the economy might not be that good or things not going right in your family or physical battle on the soil when you don't know what's going to happen because different cities are under under attack, one specific thing that Demetrius Dudeman prophesied about was uh, Russia, Mexico, uh, Nicaragua, mm -hmm. coming up from our southern border. You know, as we talked about in the previous program, you can watch that. But they saw, uh, Russian spies saw where our nuclear warehouses were, and so they're exploding our nuclear warehouses, which makes the air nuclear reactive, and it begins to destroy, you know, and we Lights. talked about in our previous program that 75%, according to Demetrius Dudeman, you know, it could, could potentially, what you want to do is be on God's side. If you're on God's side, you know, which means you're, you just re admit that you, who you are as a, as, a, as a person like me and John that need Jesus, we need forgiveness, and just humble yourself before God. That's the key to it. And then listen, get under some authority. Get a, don't, don't just go to church. Get under a man or woman of God who actually can hear from God because you need to start hearing from God yourself because I believe we're going to come out of this and we're going to see the greatest great awakening we've ever seen, but it always comes. The first great awakening in America came, what came after that? The Revolutionary War, the American Revolutionary War. The second great awakening came, or the, no, the, the, yeah, the second great awakening came, what came after that? America's Civil War. Many, many, 800,000 Americans, brothers going against brothers, killed, were killed in the Civil War. That's a terrible time. But great awakening was there you know, simultaneously. So it looks like these things kind of come together. And so, I just, want, I just want to share that with you before we go in. So imagine that. You know, we said it's going to be a physical battle. The third time I said it, boom, the, the uh, op fiber optics went out. And the fiber optics went out and the power went out for uh, quite some time, you know, that week. And it was just amazing to see, you know, God's letting us know. He says he doesn't do anything unless he reveals it to his prophets first. I believe that's Amos chapter 3, verse 7, something like that. And so he's telling us, he's letting us know what's happening so we can prepare. He says, when you see a storm, when you see a sword being fashioned against you, and if you cry out to me, then I will respond. But as, as those that warned, listen, all this stuff's going on. They know what's happening. They know what they're doing. They're strategizing. I mean, there's a reason why I believe China or uh, one particular nation threw George Soros out of their nation because he's actually turning the whole nation upside down. Well, right now, nobody's even paying attention to people, you know, enemies of the state that are inside America. You know, we're supposed to be protected from enemies foreign and domestic. Domestic means there's somebody inside the 50 states that are adversarial towards America, the Constitution. And so I think about Kamal Salim, and Kamal Salim talked about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of radical jihadists and others have come already into our nation that are sitting here in our nation waiting to, 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 to respond. It could be a neighbor or whatever. And you know, exactly, it was a neighbor, you know, for John. When John was in New Jersey, sure. he's living, tell him what happened, you're in your neighborhood yeah, in Jersey. I, I was living in New Jersey, about 15 minutes outside of Manhattan, and unbeknownst to us, within just a few miles away from my house, there were two um, jihadists that lived there that had plans to do some sort of attack on Newark, or I would think JFK Airport. And so they were arrested, and it was only until later that I found out that they actually lived right down the road. So who, who knew that there were terrorists right down the street from us? Right, and everybody got hit the news and all that stuff. But understand that, that a spy is someone like this. They look like an American. They're a couple, but they might not be a couple, but they have kids and all this stuff going on, just look at everyday people. Until so all of a sudden, they, they're like sleeper cells. And then all of a sudden, they get a, a notification. It's like, now it's time to do what I send you for. 
and then they do it. Well, that's what Demetrius Student was talking about. But you know how porous our borders have been. And they allowed this, they promoted it. They actually sent people to right. say, come. Right now we have people telling people, come on in, all you have to do is say this. And like, come, everybody's Come not, and we're gonna give you health benefits. We're gonna give you health <laughs> benefits, right? That's, those are governors, people running for president saying, we'll take care of everybody. You just, it's just unrealistic, but it's a spirit. You know, Ephesians 6, 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. This is a spirit that's overtaking these folks. It makes no sense at all, other than the fact that they are actually bringing destruction, trying to on our nation, trying to flip it in the cloud and pen. We're gonna talk more about this after the break, specifically from an article that just came out from Morningstar Ministries' Rick Joyner. Join us after the break. We'll be right back. I wanna to talk to you about our book. My book is out and it's ready for you right now. I will fight, 10 strategies to fight for your success. Listen, so many people in the world understand if you're gonna be successful, you gotta fight for it. And many people who are believers and Christians think that just success falls out of the sky. But God has created the earth to respond to your labor. He's created the universe to respond to you believing in faith in what he's gonna do. So I share in this book, very specifically about biblically, biblical fights that have happened, but also got 10 uh, specific uh, strategies to be able to help you. I don't care if you're a CEO, I don't care if you're a congressperson or a senator, I don't care if you're a janitor, a business owner, a teacher, a pastor. If anybody knows needs to know how to fight, pastors need to know how to fight for success and, and define you know, what success is. But I talk specifically, and I begin in this book, is about uh, how God spoke to me and why am I writing the book? God showed me specifically in a dream, a prophetic dream, several dreams, but one was that he has a wealth transfer coming and he wants to deliver wealth to his people, but they don't have the character and the integrity to be able to, to manage that wealth. He's, he's told, he told me that he's been getting a lot of money and wealth to them, but it goes right through their fingers like holes in a bowl. So they have to learn how to be able to develop strategies, biblical strategies to be able to position, be positioned, why? because a great harvest of souls is coming and it's gonna take many, many dollars to be able to bring in that harvest and it's gonna be God's people who will fund that. And so he's looking for people that are, are willing to say, I wanna be positioned. This is all about being positioned for great wealth. And it's not necessarily great wealth and money, it could be great wealth and influence, whatever God has entrusted you with. So get your, it's a free book. You just cover shipping and handling. We wanna send it to you for free. And uh, you can go to vfnkb.com for all the details. You can see it on your screen, but listen, it's here, it's right here for you. Wonderful thing, oh my, how many nuggets, oh my, maybe uh, 500, 600 yeah. <laughs> wisdom nuggets in addition to these success strategies. It's yours now, vfnkb.com. 100 Days of Peace. Many Brazilian Christians are calling it a milestone in the history of Brazil in integrating sport and religious values. It's an Olympic initiative put into effect by the Catholic Church with organized events before, during, and after the Olympic Games to engage a new generation of young athletes with biblical values and to spread a message of peace. In his 2014 message for the World Cup in Brazil, Pope Francis said, Sport is a form of entertainment, but above all, an instrument to communicate values. The Pontifical Council for the Laity says that Olympic values recalls the teachings of Christ in the Gospels, mutual respect, and the care of the body, referring in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to the body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible, impacting the 2016 Olympic Games. Brought to you by Museum of the Bible. So now you got racists blaming each other, you got police blaming the people, the people blaming the police, you got parents blaming children, children blaming parents. When are we gonna seek his face? When are we gonna turn? Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. So I wanna read from you, have John read if you would you know, from the journal that just came out from Morningstar Ministries. You can get these journals. You can go to morningstarministries.org. This is the May 2019, volume 28, number five. And he's talking about, Rick Joyner, this is his journal. He's talking about how to prepare for the coming second American Revolution, Revolutionary Civil War. And this is part three. Part three. Okay, can you read that for us? Yeah, I have a lot of interchange with Christian leaders 
as well as leaders in other fields. Since having the dream about the coming second revolutionary civil war, I've talked with many about it. To my surprise, I have yet to get a skeptical response. Some replied that they believed that something like this was coming for some time. So I wonder if, if in some things, I can be slow to see what is obvious to others and need dramatic dreams uh, like this to wake me up. With most of the re revelations I've had of, of coming major events, some have happened pretty fast, which I consider to be within a couple of years. Mm. Now, others took decades to unfold. Yet, until I am given a specific timing, I look for signs to indicate the timing. The signs that I have seen indicate to me that this is unfolding faster than I expected. This is my opinion, not revelation. However, to let you in on what I'm thinking at this time, I think that this is likely to unfold in just a few years or even a couple of years. I'm sensing, I'm sensing like these coming elections, if it doesn't go yeah. the way that people want it to go, even though Very the, the people voted this last previous elections, they're, they don't like the way that people are voting, so they're willing to, to crash it. Crash the whole system. Yeah. You're hearing that over and over again. Yeah. Okay. It would not surprise me if it broke out at any time. Now the sign of the times, the first sign I look for with regard to this was anger on the right beginning to spill into violence. Conservatives tend to be more reserved and law abiding. President Nixon called them the silent majority because they tended to be uh, reticent to even protest. Now this is not to imply that there are not right wing extremists and organizations, but for the most part, conservatives tend to be far more reserved. They're a job, they're now, a job working. Yeah. yeah right? When a recently arrested Coast Guard officer was found with weapons and and a Coast plans, Guard, yeah, Coast Guard officer, yeah, yeah, was was found with weapons and plans to attack leftist leaders. We of course uh, prayed that this was an isolated incident of one troubled man. Yet, when we start to uh, see a trend of this type of thing, we should take uh, it as a sign that things are getting worse and it's getting near. It's time to pray. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. second sign. This talks about three signs. The second sign. But we also saw the congressman playing ball, and a guy comes out with a gun and starts yeah. shooting at the congressman. And, and Congressman Scalise is a miracle that he's alive. It was tra it was very tragic, yeah. and you don't even hear what's. I haven't even talked about. Yeah, I haven't talked about that. That was a it's major, like an major acceptable attack. thing. It's an assassination attempt. It's exactly what it was. It's an assassination to, attempt to the majority in Congress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second sign I have looked for this is the assault on our southern border to mm -hmm. grow, along with reports of a deep darkness manifesting in an extremely cruel and evil attacks on people. Now, this is because of a series of dreams I had a few years ago about an onslaught of deep darkness coming across our southern border. I now understand that this was related to what I saw in my dream about the coming revolutionary slash civil war. As the New York Times reported, what is being done to many in the caravans, especially to women, indicates a new level of deep darkness and demonic act, uh, depravity. They're being raped, they're trafficking oh, them. The cartel, horrible, horrible. By, by what these politicians promoting that, the cartel scene is a money-making opportunity. So they're actually running ads down south to be able to gather them up in the cartel, yeah. saying for $10,000 each. And so they're trafficking, yeah. the car, so we're putting all that money, they're putting that money in the cartel's hands. And if the know? government is promoting it, then the government's actually being involved in human trafficking. Or at least the politicians <laughs> are doing yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> in the dreams I had about the southern border, the new level of demonic evil created such an outrage at our federal government for allowing this to happen that federal agents and authorities had to flee from many states. This caused the federal government's authority and influence to be radically reduced and even rejected altogether by some states. So it's like all of a sudden, because we're seeing, yeah, we're seeing government officials promoting this, mm -hmm. promoting the destruction of America and flipping America and bringing all these folks in without like it's doing no legal. Deal. So what happens is, because he saw in the dream is, people said, that's enough. We know you did this. We know you promoted this and we're coming after you. They're promoting it, but this evil hasn't un fully unleashed yet. 
Right. And when this evil darkness and people start getting hurt and they start seeing how horrific this is, they're going to realize you guys. So the Americans this. are going to realize you're the one that promoted this. Yeah, you opened the door to this. And so what he saw was government officials running out of their offices trying to flee because Americans started going and saying, listen, you're the one that did yeah. this. And the influence and the authority they had is going to be greatly diminished. Some states, he says, reject them completely. Yeah, and two, know that we're not promoting any kind of war or no. anything like that. We're just reading prophetically what's taking place right. and signs of the times. As the demented cruelty of some in these caravans becomes wider known, it, it could well create a flashpoint for this. Now, of course, we should pray that all evil and attacks on our country are reduced. Even though I was shown that this revolutionary slash civil war was inevitable, we can decrease its violence, destruction, and human cost by obeying 2 Chronicles 7.14. Now, we must turn to the Lord even more resolutely than those turning to the demonic. So we have to be stronger for God than That's they are right. stronger for say, evil. evil. Exactly. Yeah. We need to let our congressmen and our senators know that we expect them to do all they can to secure our southern borders as quickly as possible. Now, we should pray earnestly that everyone now seeking to obstruct this would repent and change their stand or get removed from office. Now, if they don't, so much evil and depravity will be manifested that Americans will turn to those who stand in the way of protecting our own people and it will not be pretty. The issue of securing our southern border is obviously exasperating the division between the political right and left at this time. There is a real danger that the level of violence that Americans are becoming subjected to by those infiltrating the southern border will be turned to rage and violence against all government leaders that allowed this to happen. In the dream, this is Rick Joyner speaking, this rage was the main factor that participated, uh, uh, precipitated the turning of the states against the federal government. So the states turned against D.C., mm. basically, the federal government. Yeah. Okay. It seems to me that the pressure from this is growing faster than I anticipated. Mm. In the vision I received in 1987 that I wrote about in the book, The Harvest, I saw a hot war along the southern border. In 1987, this seemed unlikely. Now it seems almost inevitable. What I saw in that dream was a pitched battle between armies, not just uh, a rising violence. Obviously, the U.S. could easily prevail in such a conflict, but the ultimate consequences will still be bad for all. He further writes, the main thing, most prophecy, including biblical prophecy, tends to be more general the specific. This keeps us seeking the Lord and depending on the Holy Spirit, who does not just give us guidance, but is our guide. While prophecy normally points us in a general direction, we must get closer to the Lord and resolutely follow him to stay on track. Therefore, the main way that we prepare for anything is to get closer to the Lord. We can know every detail and the timing of what will happen. But this will not benefit us if we're not abiding with the Lord. Well, that's the, very important. The key is abiding with God. So he's saying abide with the Lord through this. And so I want to encourage you. A lot of people want to do it, don't know how to do it. We have a simple plan for you. It's at iabide.org. You request it online. It comes to you right away in your email. And we'll teach you each step of the way. Very simple method to do that. What's going to happen is God's going to begin to speak to you. And you, mm. need, you need to hear the voice of the Lord. For yourself, right? For yourself, right? right. This is not to say that strategies and plans do not have their place. But if we put our trust in them, in place of the Lord, they will likely lead us to be in the wrong place and do the wrong things. As we're told in Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. As Francis French Payne likes to say, we are called to fo follow Emmanuel, not Emmanuel. I belabor this point. I purpose purposely when addressing prophecies like this because we will not be prepared or in the right place uh, doing the right things if we give more attention to knowing what will happen than we do getting closer to the Lord 
and following him. That's so important. I want to we want to make this all available to you on the VFN torch. You go to vfnkb.com. But I want you to be prepared. You need to be prepared. This is a time to rejoice. If you've been trying to tell people about the Lord, you've been sharing your testimony and you're watching this kind of this deafness or this hard-heartedness or they're like, "Okay, whatever," and they go back to digital distractions whether it's media, games, whatever, some just Moves. whatever. And uh and so you're looking at, say, well, what's going to happen that caused their hearts to turn? Well, pain. You know, pain happens. The, the uh, not knowing what's next. There's, there's nobody that seeks the Lord like a man or a woman who suddenly ends up in jail, and they didn't know that their, their, their consequences are going to end them up there. Or somebody who just went through a difficult time with a teenager or a child that just rebelled against you and you're just 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 destroyed just distraught over the whole thing or you know going through a sickness or a disease well war is just evil but you're looking at people right now the spirit that's on a lot of folks that are in the nation that if you just stand up and start talking about what's right they throw things at you they they try they punch you in the face and these are spirit get to understand these are evil spirits that, are, that they've taken on, and so they really don't know what they're going to do. They, you can't logically predict what they're going to do because they're driven by a dark force. You know, they've given themselves over to darkness, and they can come out of that. They can make a choice to come on the right side. But Jesus said, your, the Word of God says, your peace in the midst of these kind of situations is a testimony to them that you're going to be saved and saved by God, but they're going to be destroyed and destroyed by God. So you're just having peace and, and abiding with God. And we're going to tell you more. You can find out way much and much more. And if you're not connected yet to a local church, maybe Vine Fellowship Network's for you. You can go to vinefellowshipnetwork.org. It's time to get connected to a family, a body of believers, somebody who's hearing from God because you're going to need to hear every day what the Spirit of God is saying to the church so you can make those shifts and, and moves. But uh, this is exciting. It's encouraging. Be prepared. Uh, I want to be able to pray with you. I want to pray with you in just a minute, but I want to ask you, you have been talking to you this program and last. What are your comments? Comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. Have you been getting prophetic words from God about this day? And or have you have you have you heard something specifically about uh, what's happening over the borders? I'm talking about you know going there and talking hateful to, about people. I'm talking about just sharing you know what God is saying and having compassion for those that are coming. Uh, well, you know everybody's not bad coming over. It's just inside that element. There's a lot yeah. of people that are bad. I want to pray with you right now. Father God, I just pray a blessing over our audience. I pray, Lord, that their ears would be open to hear your voice, God. And dear Lord, we ask you, end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray in Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. Love God, love others, and lead others to do the same. God bless. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below, right? Wait, wait, wait. Don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the VFNKB community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.